Hi, it's Kat, and this is your astrology forecast for the month of April 2020. Um, well, these are weird, very weird times. Uh, and at the time of recording this, um, just a, a week away uh, from the 1st of April, things could change a lot by the time uh, we roll into the 1st of April and I can actually release this episode. So we find ourselves in very strange times, and um, it's interesting to see. Uh, from the astrological perspective, taking a bit of distance from world events, uh, just how everything lines up. So I guess beautifully, but also terrifyingly. And um, yeah, I'm releasing this, I'm recording this a few days out from the start of April. So who knows what's even going to happen in the next few days. Uh, but I can only do my best as a beginning astrologer to hopefully shed some light on what might come up, at least in your personal life. In the month ahead. Also, as it's my birthday month, I think it's going to be quite a quiet birthday this year. I don't mind. Uh, I'm going to be giving 50% off all of my astrology readings, um, at all of my birth chart readings right now. So if you're interested in booking a reading for 50% off by the end of April, you can do that now at thecreativeintrovert.com slash astrology. And you can actually take that reading, you, know, you can book it for later than April, but uh, you can actually... Um, Get the deal if you book it now. All right, so let's kick off. So on the first of the month, we're going to see Mars has separated from Saturn in Aquarius. And this isn't an aspect necessarily, but uh, we've just had that hit with Mars and Saturn being conjunct at the end of March. Um, so this is the kind of state of the month as we enter April. Um, and it might feel, at least for that first you know, couple of days, um, some release from the pressure of Mars trying to butt its head against the brick wall that is Saturn. So this can feel like maybe um, a breath of fresh air, maybe I can move forward in some way. Mars has less dignity here in Aquarius than it did in Capricorn, uh, but Saturn's energy will still be strong. Uh, so Mars is going to be strong, stronger in um, long-term thinking, uh, broader-term thinking, uh, maybe a bit less selfish, a bit more patient than Mars typically is. Something else that we might experience with Mars in Aquarius is a bit of mental angst. So this is Mars in an air sign, Aquarius is associated with the element of air, um, which is often associated with the mind, the intellect, and just thinking, basically. Uh, so Mars there um, can create a bit of um, tension and stress there. I spoke more about Mars and Aquarius in last month's forecast as well, which will be linked to below as well. Right, so between, I think, the 3rd and the 4th of April, we've got Venus entering Gemini. So this is the sign where she will be retrograde um, later this year, so around mid-May. As you know, Venus represents things like romance, love, art, beauty, relationships, friendship, harmony, sensuality. And Gemini, which is ruled by Mercury, is often associated with the intellect, logic, seeing both sides of something as it's, you know, the, the um, symbol associated with Gemini is the twins, and objectivity. So Mercury, we have to look at, you know, the Lord of Gemini to get a bit more of a picture here. So Mercury's still in Pisces, swimming with the fishes. So the energy will change when it gets out of its detriment and into fiery Aries, which is coming up on the 11th of April. In general, this is a social, chatty, charming Venus. So for people in isolation, which is, I guess, most of us at, still at this point, I'm guessing, maybe this is embracing our online communication and online gatherings a bit more. Uh, funnily enough, I am holding one online gathering on April the 4th, so that makes sense. That was not planned with my knowledge of Venus being in Gemini, but um, yeah, and actually the link to join that will be below as well. Venus in Gemini can be a little bit shallow and a bit heady, so um, in the sense that there is this kind of uplifting energy, um, head in the clouds, you know, as air rises. Um, this might come across as somewhat superficial. It's also somebody who loves a great conversation and might even fall in love with somebody for their intellect. But when it comes to the deeper, darker, emotional side of life and love, maybe they feel somewhat uncomfortable. 
It's also a sense of sweeping that stuff, that difficult stuff, under the rug and staying in the place of the mind and the intellect. So quite shortly, Venus will be trining Saturn, who is in Aquarius, the other air sign. So whenever you get two planets in um, signs of the same element, you get a trine, at least by whole sign. Uh, and this will be the exact trine. So this is a you know more harmonious um, aspect, even though Saturn can be thought of as a more difficult planet. Saturn actually here uh, gives a more a, a flavour of realism to this, which can be very constructive, especially if you are prone to um, the more heady, idealistic side of the these air quality signs. So they're both in air signs, and this element is more associated with ideas than with tangible things. Saturn can say no to the ideas that suck and actually saves us from a lot of bad ideas, which is really helpful when you want to take an idea into reality. Uh, there's this interesting almost aspect that I was just, I don't know much about talking about almost aspects. I just found it fascinating that Venus almost trines Mars all month and Mars is moving so fast in April. Um, it appears to be moving faster than Venus at points um, and they're basically applying to a trine but Mars keeps outrunning her all month which I just think is, um, the image of that is quite interesting. So it's the sense of feeling like maybe this is a bad idea, maybe I shouldn't be talking to that person, you know maybe there's a, um, a, a tryst, a meeting of lovers or that, that never quite comes to pass. Maybe it's a sense of dread that never comes to pass. Uh, so it's this kind of underlying tension, not necessarily a bad thing. Like I said, this is a trine aspect, so maybe it's not so bad. Uh, and maybe it can feel quite exciting and electrifying. Um, but basically, it's something that doesn't quite get consummated. Uh, so naturally, there's a frustration, Mars, involved there. On the 4th of April, Mercury is conjunct Neptune in Pisces. So this can feel like um, smoke and mirrors, tricksters, being confused. Um, you know, Mercury is, or at least it used to be, a lot um, associated with the trickster. Um, and particularly with Neptune and Pisces, this water sign, uh, feeling a lot of illusion, basically. Um, maybe confusing information, manipulation, a denial of the facts. Um, this might come up in more positive ways, so things like really interesting dreams, uh, really rich symbolic dreams, seeing symbols and synchronicities in day-to-day -day life. Uh, it might come up in having a profound intuition about something, uh, faith triumphing over logic, and maybe getting a realisation while meditating on a koan or something like that. Uh, it makes me think of my experience with the last Mercury retrograde, um, which was mostly in Pisces, and just working out song lyrics to songs that I'd been singing incorrectly for, for many years. So it'll be interesting to see what happens at this time uh, in, you know, global news and maybe what clarity might come at least following this and later when Mercury gets out of Pisces, which I am personally looking forward to. On the 5th, Jupiter will be conjunct Pluto. Ooh, this is big news, uh, bigger than I'm really capable of talking about, but um, a few things. So the first, this is going to be the first of two meetings of between Jupiter and Pluto. Um, and obviously these are slow moving planets. So we'll have been feeling this energy for quite some time and for some time to come. And as this is the first of two, as the retrogrades will be beginning soon, um, the next one will happen on June 30th. So this is going to be like a story that continues actually until the end of the year. Things that might arise, money concerns, Pluto is often associated with money, hidden money, um, extremes of wealth or poverty, so Jupiter is also amplifying uh, the extremes there. The last time we had Jupiter and Pluto in Capricorn was 2008. We know what happened globally then. Um, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, we're already 
heck we're already seeing um the financial effects uh of coronavirus right now um i liked that austin Kopic on the astrology podcast said something about um this meeting being potentially about hidden opportunities uh, that when he sees this um, signature in a chart that can often um, point to um, hidden opportunities in people's lives that come out at some point. And the late astrologer Alan White used to say that Pluto makes big things small and small things big, which is quite, you know, it's obviously the essence of what an extreme is. And um, this is also related to things like microscopes that magnify really small things and telescopes that magnify really extremely distant things. So, I mean, with the small things, what about a virus, which is a small thing, um, getting fucking huge, which is what we've just seen. There's also potential for great, uh, a great overhaul here, these opportunities, um, resulting in a world that is maybe more aligned with our true self, the idealism of Jupiter. But of course, this kind of change is one, not guaranteed, and two, not easy. Remember that it's always darkest before the dawn. And remember, it's not a quick change. We won't wake up on the 6th of April like, oh, Jupiter and Pluto, the conjunction, this massive conjunction is done. Same with Saturn and Pluto. This is a six-ish month aspect, just like Saturn and Pluto was a long time coming and we're still feeling and seeing those effects. I'm going to link to some great articles on the Jupiter and Pluto conjunction in the description below. Okay, so moving on to the 8th of April, we've got a full moon in Libra. I see this as a kind of reckoning, a reckoning of what we haven't been addressing. Where have we been unbalanced? Maybe a bit overly optimistic and a bit self-centered, Aries. So something radical is coming to light. Maybe going back to that um, Mercury and Neptune conjunction. Maybe this is a plot twist. Maybe we see some outrage. Some questions to ask might be, where have I been too self-centered? Where have I been too strong-willed? What balance do I need to readdress? This is also square to the party in Capricorn. And let's say that that is representing some of the difficulties in the world and maybe our lives right now. Um, this, this full moon in Libra, a sign ruled by Venus. Um, this might also bring up the question of, how can we make the ugly truth look better right now? How can we um, bring in more harmony despite all of this uh, tension and difficulty? On the same day, we have Mars square Uranus. So these planets are, in, are both in fixed signs right now, Aquarius and Taurus, uh, both very strong, combustible, change-driven planets. There's an ex kind of explosive carpe diem, or fuck it, mentality to this. Rebellious quality, recklessness, determined. So uh, determined, I say that because these are fixed signs. Um, and we, we're seeing determination in the elements of um, air. So that is related to the mind, um, as well as earth. And that's related to matter. So it's kind of um, the mind versus matter right now. We might see disruptions or innovations in technology. I really like this image that I got from Ren Butler's book, Archetypal Universe, which is uh, the art movement of Dadaism. This is really uh, descriptive of this transit. And Saturn might be the planet to slow all of this down just a touch, um, who is you know, in and ruling the sign that Mars is in and also going to be, you know, vaguely trying to Uranus. So Saturn is going to be bringing a bit more of a considered solution-oriented approach to the spontaneity of Mars and Uranus. On the 11th, Mercury enters Aries. Whew, no more of that Mercury swimming with the fishes. So we're going to get, hopefully, much more clarity here, at least in, you know, our thoughts and in our words. There might be a tendency towards heated words, maybe violent words, or using our words as weapons. And this is because um, the Lord of Aries is Mars. You know, there might be that pointed sarcasm or um, putting your foot in it, speaking before thinking. 
Uh, and we might have a bit of that mental stress, which is unsurprising at these times, but again, with that combination of Mercury and Mars. On the 14th, the Sun is square Pluto. So you can think about things like obsessive ambition, power struggles, ruthless drive, domination. The sun is exalted here in Aries and somewhat cocksure, maybe a bit overly confident. But Pluto is in the superior square and has the upper hand. It's that feeling of somebody saying to you, oh, you think you're the big man around town, but that could very much backfire on you. Another thing I got from Ren Butler um, is that this particular um, aspect um, emphasizes the idea of the interplay between the ego, the sun, and the shadow, Pluto. So it might be an interesting time to do some shadow work. Even though it's really painful for the ego to confront the shadow, it's a really wonderful thing when it can and it's willing to do so. There's this opportunity right now to integrate the shadow in a healthier, less destructive way and not be overcome by the shadow. So just be aware of that dynamic coming mid-month. On the 15th, the sun is square to Jupiter. So if we can be humble and aware of this tendency to be overly greedy or overly self-aggrandizing right now, uh, then I think we can have a much smoother time with this square with Jupiter. So it could be a really bright and jovial, optimistic, generous um, time for us. Or we could go down the route of the self-aggrandizing, the grandiose, the excessive, the arrogant. Both of these planets are super related to the light. And um, yeah, the brighter the light, the darker the shadow. So we might be feeling, or people around us might be quite righteous right now, um, righteous about beliefs and certainly, certainly willful with this Aries. Both are in cardinal signs, which feels a lot more like that burst of energy rather than a sustained energy. So you might want to start a new project with this enthusiasm, with this, you know, burst of energy, but you might find that it peters out later in the week as the sun move signs but hopefully it doesn't because if you can carry it through with the sun in Taurus um, there can be some great um, staying power to that project. The 18th Mercury will be sextile to Venus. I don't normally mention sextiles for some reason I just don't see them as that big a deal but I, they can be and uh, I feel like they're more opportunities to make something out of and this is my creative highlight for the month. Uh, it's not a big deal kind of highlight. Both of these planets are very fast moving, but I just think it could be a really nice, playful day. Themes of friendship, um, great conversations, creative ideas, um, and maybe just a bit more of a lift, a light and breezy lift here. So Venus is in Gemini and has reception from Mercury, which sweetens this even more. This is a great time to make something small yet beautiful. Maybe it's just like a one day project you set yourself. And that might be, um, you know, something to do with more detailed line work. I'm just thinking about um, mercurial kind of artwork um, or just a quick art project that you're doing to pass the time. Maybe an interior design project. <laughs> you um, renovate an old lampshade. Uh, so nothing deep or grand, just pleasant and pleasing. Uh, I've seen this aspect and just general Venus Mercury aspects in a lot of charts of web designers. So people who do have the technical end of things down, so that's Mercury a bit more, plus that communicative side, uh, and the ability to make things look visually pleasing and harmonious, Venus. On the 20th, the sun enters Taurus. So we've gone from the ram to the bull. This is my favorite zodiacal duo. I just love to imagine the ram like headbutting the bull and trying to goad it into action. Uh, they're right next to each other and it, it just makes so much sense to me to have this dynamic between the signs. And you don't see this between every sign um, that's next to each other, but I just find it so funny with uh, Aries and Taurus. So if we've been a bit foolhardy and headstrong over the past month, now's the time to take a chill pill. And take it slow. 
Taurus is an earth sign, cool and dry and feminine. Uh, the sun is cooled down here a bit. So where Aries is more focused on the self and self-expression, Taurus is starting to look around and notice that they're in a material world and they have a physical body. It's Venus's home sign and it relates to her interest in the objects of the senses, a love of nature, art, good food and so on. The moon is also exalted in Taurus and the moon is also associated with the realm of fortune, the realm of matter and material things. So that's just a little explainer or part of the reason why the moon is exalted there. On the 21st, the sun will be square to Saturn. Um, so we've gone from the squares with Pluto and Jupiter and now the sun is squaring Saturn. So this might feel like a hit to self-confidence, especially from going from this you know, shiny, Aries, exalted sun. Now we're going to get this hit from Saturn. This is like the inner critic who has just stepped in and taken that cocky sun down a peg or ten. Uh, the upside of this is that it can lend us self-discipline that we didn't have when the sun was in Aries. So some of that guilt that comes from trying so hard to be good, uh, but to feel like you're failing at it. And that can be a sense of this right now. The sun in Venus's sign might bring a tendency to be caring too much about material things, not having enough or not having the best things. The prestige and status that comes from or supposedly comes from material things. Uh, this might be challenged right now. It also might be a challenge with fatherly figures. So think of, you know, Cronus, Saturn devouring his children because he was scared about the prophecy that they'd kill him. Um, that can always be a theme here. 23rd, the new moon in Taurus. So like I mentioned, the moon is exalted there. Uh, new moons bring new beginnings. Taurus is that fertile sign. So thinking about sowing seeds, literally or figuratively. Um, we might have a sharp contrast here between the elements of earth, Taurus and air, as this will be receiving a square from the Aquarius planet Saturn and Mars. Um, and we've got that air coming from Venus being in Gemini, the host of this new moon. So think about a challenge between what's a great idea, that's the air element, and what's practical, that's the earth. Uranus is going to be lending its support to the idea of what's most radical, but this isn't necessarily going to be um, about ideas alone. Um, again, Uranus is in Taurus, so... Um, it's, it's radical uh, in the realm of matter. So whilst the square from Saturn is like, no, have you thought about this and this and this? Um, basically, my advice here is to take into account what you're personally prone towards. Um, so you might be all about ideas uh, and you might be all about material things and just, you know, making things. Um, you might be prone to being overly cautious or you might be really um, prone to taking wacky risks. And I think it's a good idea just to do your best to compensate in the other direction, whichever you're personally prone to. Um, I want to talk about the, um, the tarot card that is associated with the Deccan that this is taking place in. So if you don't know about the Deccans, that's okay. I don't know much about them either. <laughs> but Every sign of the zodiac, uh, the 30 degrees is divided up into three, um, so 10 degrees each. These are all called decans. I just find these interesting because of how neatly they get associated with um, different cards in the tarot. And um, here's just a little bit about decan one, which is where this is happening, and the five of pentacles, which is the card that this is associated with. So this Deccan is ruled by Mercury and Venus, which is interesting as Venus is in Mercury's sign right now. It's also associated with the more raging bull side of Taurus, um, with less of that more placid, laid back energy. Uh, so it's still, and this, the reason for this is that it's still carrying that cardinal fire from, uh, from Aries. Therefore, Taurus Deccan 1 
It may take ages to start a project, but once they get the momentum going, there's no stopping them and they will flatten everything in their path. Uh, I'm going to read out a little bit from teachmetarot.com. The Five of Pentacles can be an indication that deep spiritual change is needed and an understanding that money is not everything and most certainly not a, a guarantee of happiness. Instead of being physically hungry, the hunger may be more of an emotional or spiritual level. You may need to evaluate your life to see where the true feeling of deprivation is coming from. You may need to look around you and certainly further than your front door to understand what true poverty means. And um, I think this comes at an interesting time where understandably people are very stressed out about material things. Uh, these things are all getting challenged right now because of this global crisis and maybe this is a time to kind of come back to just remind ourselves of what's actually real and important to us. On the 25th of April, Mercury is square to Pluto. This is another great time to probe into hidden matters, whether they're outside of you or inside of you. There can be a potential for mental overthinking, obsessive thinking, dark thoughts, violent thoughts. I guess it's a good time for reading detective novels or di a dark psychological movies. However, if you're looking for something a little bit lighter, uh, a little bit more escapist, then I recommend uh, the Ghostbusters. Is it Ghostbusters 2? Mm, but yeah, it is. Um, with Vigo the Carpathian. He's got that evil magician Mercury Pluto vibe to him and it's not too um, there's not too much peril in that film if you're feeling a little bit like you don't want to watch the most um, stressful movies right now but still get that kind of dark vibe Vigo, the scourge of Carpathia, the sorrow of Moldavia, command you. Oh, command me, Lord. On a mountain of skulls in the castle of pain, I sat on a throne of blood. What was will be, what is will be no more. Now is the season of evil. Evil? Find me a child that I might live again. Yes, a child. A child. A child? A child. Okay, so on the 26th, this is a big day, got quite a few things happening. Uh, Mercury is square to Jupiter. Mercury and Jupiter are, well, I see them as these natural antagonists and it's pretty much spelled out in the chart in the um, Dignity Doctrine. Uh, I have another podcast called The Seeker and the Skeptic and I really think of us as Mercury square Jupiter or Mercury opposing Jupiter perhaps. Basically the seeker here is Jupiter so interested in faith-based beliefs, intuition, the big picture, spirituality, and the skeptic is Mercury, who wants the hard facts and the logic, critical thinking, the scientific method, uh, possibly atheistic or at least agnostic. And there's a real tension here between intuition and reason. Maybe we find ourselves overdoing mercurial things, so overdoing being the uh, Jupiter expanding. So chatting shit about people, gossiping, talking over people. And remember that Mercury is hosted by Mars here, so it's extra likely um, that we won't be the most harmonious with our speech. So letting your mouth run, basically. I do think there's a good opportunity for some comedy value here. Uh, the joviality of Jupiter, the sense of humour. Um, maybe we're seeing the darker sense of humour as Jupiter is in Capricorn. Uh, and I've seen that associated with both Aries and Capricorn. Um, maybe, maybe just more of a sarcastic or dry sense of humour with Aries and maybe a more toilet-based, 
blue comedy style with Capricorn, kind of like dirty old man jokes. Um, no offense to Capricornian comedians, I think that's fine. Next, on that same day, the sun is conjunct Uranus. So we've got potentially a strong desire for independence here, for freedom and self-expression. This might be the illumination of something that liberates. Uh, it might liberate someone or something. So I think of Prometheus, he's you know, often associated with Uranus, uh, giving the fire of the gods to the mortals. Maybe, I mean, this feels like a, one, of the, one of the many potential transits for the end of self-isolation, at least for some people. That's really optimistic. Okay, <laughs> it, it, by the time it comes to the May forecast, I'll be like, that was really optimistic, jeez. Uh, something else that happens that day is Pluto turning retrograde. So this will last until October. This is a call to look deeper into what's up until now been hidden. So maybe we're dealing with the stuff that has been trying to be swept under the rug, either by other people um, globally, um, or that we've been trying to sweep under the rug or shove in our closets. I'm going to read out a little bit from Gray Crawford. There's a great article on his website. Um, actually, it's on astrology.com and I'm going to link to it in the description below. He says... The first half of Pluto retrograde will be dominated by Jupiter's influence, seeding visions for new growth, while also requiring that we tend to whatever has ruptured in the wake of the Saturn-Pluto conjunction that began earlier in the year. Consolidation of resources and contraction will also be necessary, even as we seek expansion. This is interesting, because this was written on, the February, on February 20th, so I don't think that Gray was aware of how big the coronavirus stuff would get. Or maybe he did because he's an excellent astrologer. But it's interesting just how appropriate this emphasis on resources and um, contraction he, uh, he puts. On the 28th, Mercury enters Taurus. So we've, we're ending the month with some grounded thinking, some practical, strategic and realistic plans maybe a bit of a tendency towards stubbornness. Uh, we've got this cold dryness of Taurus, which is going to be lending Mercury greater distance and perspective. Uh, could lean towards callous action, maybe lacking heart. Um, but it's nice. I think it will be nice just to have some distance. You know, we are not our thoughts. Um, and maybe a nice mutual reception with the host Venus, who is in Gemini, Mercury's domicile, uh, and Mercury will be in her domicile. So again, this could be really creative and constructive. And just a reminder that as this is April, my birthday month, um, I'm going to be offering 50% off all readings. So if you are interested in figuring out what's up right now, um, you'll be able to get a pretty massive saving um, all of April. So if you just book um, your reading before April, uh, then you'll be able to benefit from that discount. That doesn't mean you have to take the reading in April. You can book it further out and uh, you don't have to be born in April as well. I just want to make that clear. Uh, yeah, so you can find out more about that at thecreativeintrovert.com slash astrology. So another big month. Uh, I'm personally looking forward to this. I think there's going to be a lot of changes that we're going to see. Um, I'm hoping some some obviously we're all hoping for some relief from the coronavirus madness um but i'm also seeing a lot of opportunities this month to create uh this could be a really great time for just creative thriving to be taking place all over the world um and a lot of great opportunities to dispel any of that nervous energy i know that i've been feeling that um over the past month the month of march anyway there are also lots of great calls to look inwards um and to really do some self-reflection um, I know that that's been something that I've been having plenty of time to do at the moment and quite grateful for that. So a great time for some introspection to remember what's real and what's not and to seek for some clarity and wisdom to help us know the difference. All right, that's all I've got for April and I'll hopefully catch you again soon.